The man in our next story is a Beaver Creek tree farmer and an active voice in organizations of small, private tree growers. But that's not really why we wanted to talk to him. We heard that a day spent with Wendell Harmon is like a semester in Tree Science 101. Wendell Harmon says he's not against clear cutting. He just doesn't want to do it on his land. Partial cutting is a message he preaches. This is logged all the time. This is my heaviest logged property. Just look. <laughs> That's what partial cutting can do. What it does, he says, is to produce quality trees and handsome profits, while keeping his tree farm looking very much like, well, like a forest. This unit has been logged five times in recent years. I'd like to have you look at the quality of the trees. This stand of 60-year-old timber is one of Wendell's oldest. It's generated some dependable income along the way and is now a plot of top dollar pole quality trees. And as these big firs are cut, a generation of cedars grows into the spaces. Now with, with the light they've got, they're growing quite rapidly. Wendell practices a hands-on kind of management. It takes hard work and commitment, planning and patience. And he spends a lot of time with his trees. I really enjoy thinning. You can see I enjoy it. <laughs> Wendell's 82 now. He retired from the Forest Service long ago but only to devote full time to the hundreds of acres of trees he and his wife own. Down here we have some little seedling trees I want to release. Release is a key word here. He's continually removing brush and trees to free up more water and sunlight for other trees, to release them to achieve their potential. Long before the partial cutting of the big trees comes this, the pre-commercial thinning of the immature forest. Pre-commercial thinning means cutting the trees before they have any commercial value. He learned about thinning in the pine forests of South Dakota as a Forest Service forester in the 1930s. We used, uh, in those days, we used axes and brush hooks. There wasn't any such thing as power saws in those days. Back in the Black Hills, trees were precious. They were thinned and selectively logged to maximize production. But years later, Wendell transferred to Oregon. Here, by comparison, he felt the forests of fast-growing Douglas fir were used wastefully. He convinced some of his superiors that early thinning of second-growth forest might actually produce more timber. He's not shy about his achievement. That's how Douglas fir pre-commercial thinning started on National Forest was in 1961, 1961, and on the Oak Ridge District. And soon thereafter, industry got into it too. Today, most of the national forests here are thin, and of course, so are all of Wendell's. You know, I changed that from a patch of brush to a stand of trees now. Some of Wendell's other practices, he just figured out on his own. He developed an ingenious way to keep boomers, also called mountain beavers, from eating the tips off his young fir trees. There, I got three, that's enough. Now, I'm going to uh, see if I can get that boomer to leave this alone. He sticks branches from older, tougher trees, unappealing to that's the animals, around, around the, the seedlings. And now, the boomers, amazingly little... enough, leave right, the little trees right. alone. Why waste money on trapping and killing animals? As far as I'm concerned, they're cultivating the soil. They aren't hurting anything. He's also found a way to grow fir trees in areas that flood. The very trees whose roots will die if too wet can do very well if planted on raised mounds of earth. Uh, when we first uh, had a first timber sale on the property... Had Wendell's a born teacher and an audience of one or more means that class is in session. He shows us how a single stump over time can produce two or even three trees. How the younger trees he's released can speed their growth by hooking into the root system of nearby cut trees. This happens only on Douglas fir. 
this is this brown, live brown color right here. And that, to me, then indicates it's alive and, and growing. Out in this unit is what he calls an interesting stump. Half of this double trunk tree was logged this year, revealing some of its unusual history. When this tree was this diameter, there was an injury that occurred and it killed that side of the tree, and then it's healed around. See these, how nature builds around and heals it over? Shows what nature will do. And scattered throughout his timber units, he's even created some low-tech visitor exhibits. Some are easily understood. A tree with a trunk this size produced a 75-foot pole. But others, well, we're sure this signifies something. Wendell may enjoy thinning, but marking trees is his favorite activity. I'm going to mark the trees to cut. In the old days, he used red paint for this. But ever since some confusing experiences with colorblind loggers, he's been marking with blue. That's a valuable tree. Watching him mark them, you can really see how Wendell manages his trees. Kind of hate to take that one, though. I'll take the big one over here. Harvesting the marketable ones. It's 30 inches there. It probably has about a 1,000 board feet in it. And releasing the crowded, smaller trees to thrive. This, this tree now will have a lot of room. And over that way, there's two more small ones that'll be released. I feel sorry that I have to kill something, but uh, I'm making a lot of other trees happy by taking away that big neighbor. <laughs> this unit has just been cut and won't see the spray can and chainsaw again for several more years. Wendell hires a local logger to come in and harvest most of the trees he's marked. OK, I'm ready to go. But there are days when Wendell himself picks up the big saw. That's when it's time to cut those future utility poles, the tall, straight firs with few branches, the valuable trees he's cultivated for this purpose. I reserve all the big poles for my own cutting because I've been thinking about it for so many years that I, I, I want to do it myself. Even now, as he prepares to fall this $300 tree, he's thinking about the others that will be released. I'm trying to save this little tree. Wendell is a fellow who's hard to label. He's a profit-conscious tree farmer, but he'll spare some trees just because they have pretty leaves. He dreads finding a spotted owl nest here, since that would make the adjacent 75 acres off limits to logging. But he's also been leaving rotting logs and snags for wildlife since long before that was fashionable. <laughs> Not too bad. Wasn't right where I wanted it. I saved that little tree, though. And he saved these trees, too. Uh, I, I've used the forest and made a, a good profit from it for my wife and myself. I like to say that I left the forest in about as good a condition as I found it. <laughs> Throughout our visit, Wendell never criticized the different ways other people manage their trees. And to the end, he insisted that he's not against clear cutting. It's just that if he clear cut his land, he wouldn't have any more trees to mark for sale until he's 107. No more three trees from one. No lush shade for the family campsite. He just wouldn't have much of a forest left to work in. And working in the forest is what Wendell does. <laughs> 